People totally like Brutus just as much as they like Caesar. And when did it become okay for one person to be the boss of everybody, huh? Because that's not what Rome is about. We should totally just stab Caesar! Amity Blake had cracked. Hi, I'm Kitty Monk, and we're here to talk to you about the Owl House, or more specifically, the relationship between Luz and Amity. All ships have names, and we call this one Lumity. Now, this video is really special because it's a Patreon shoutout. My VIP patron, Christopher Rosa, has requested I talk about Lumity and how it works, whereas something like Starco wasn't so great. He says, and I quote, I believe that everyone agrees that Star vs the forces of evil should have ended either season two or three with the special and the owl house should have gotten either three or four seasons dana terrace must have watched star versus the forces of evil and taken notes on what not to do and how to improve well christopher i am happy to oblige so here's the video everybody else go check out my patreon you can help support my channel and you get your name in the credits if you choose my all access or vip tier be sure to send me a shout out or a request now on with the video. If you know enough by now, I am not the biggest fan of Starco. It's not like I made several videos explaining my viewpoint. That couldn't clue you in. Now, I don't think it's a terrible ship. It's just that, well, you can't deny it's a big reason for the show's eventual decline. Instead of focusing on the fact that, say, Eclipso broke Star's trust by going inside her mind, we focus on Marco and Star eating cereal. Or instead of them making the point that the current butterflies are effectively pretenders, Star and Marco have to kiss in a photo booth and hide it from Tom. And when Tom says he knew about it but forgave the pair otherwise, Star gets mad at him for not saying anything. You knew about that? And you didn't say anything? Oh no, I know it wasn't on purpose. You told your mom! You're not supposed to be angry! I am! At first, I was a fan of this pairing. The two supported each other and brought the best out in the other person. Star showed Marco how to let loose, while Marco helped Star take control of being an individual in a world where she was meant to be a living symbol. However, because of how much time they spent apart and how long the ship was dragged out, they devolved. Star became a secret-keeping hypocrite, while Marco became a clingy control freak. I did not want these kids to get together for each other's sake. That's a recipe for codependency. But it happened. Marco, I want you to love me. Because I love you. Wait. I always complain, so for once, let me present my rebuttal. The Owl House. I'm thinking things I've never thought before. I'm feeling things I never used to feel. Is that so bad? You weren't happy before. True, outside of breaking barriers, Lumity isn't all that revolutionary. We've all seen the enemies to friends trope before, along with a dash of opposites attract. But hey, it still works. If I had to describe it. Think Mean Girls if Caddy and Regina ended up dating. But both had to go through a fudge load of character development and agony. So, let's discuss. At the start of the show, Luz and Ida initially made a deal that Luz could stay with her, provided Ida trained her in becoming a witch. Of course, Ida herself isn't the teaching type. Outside of quotes I'm sure she got from decorative mugs and Instagram posts. And because of her criminal record and hatred of public school, no. Why? School. Ida, I'm a teaching major, so that like hurts my heart. She initially doesn't like the idea of Luz attending Hexide. Still, Luz wants to learn and encounters Willow in I Was a Teenage Abomination. Willow sucks at abomination magic, but it's the Boiling Isles equivalent to STEM, so her dads want her to do it. This is when we meet Amity Blight. Willow! Wow, you're so unnoticeable, I almost rolled into ya! Ugh, this was back when she was a B-word witch, but in a love-to-hate kind of way, like Ray or Tara. <laughs> oh, Willow. You don't have anything to show, do you? <sighs> This is why people call you half a witch willow. Actually, I'm curious about this, because I want to do a deeper dive on this scene. Throughout this interaction, Amity acts like a condescending digestive biscuit. But as we later learn, Amity and Willow were friends, until Amity's parents forced her to break it off. Was Amity intentionally being a B-word because that's what was expected of her? Like, oh, I better practice my chops on my former best friend before I go and practice on Skara. Looks like someone wants to say something to you. 
die. Aw, it's like mine. But much smaller and meaningless. Or was she trying to be nice to Willow, but just couldn't get out of her own way, for whatever reason? As top student, it's my duty to tell you to keep at it. Even you could get a passing grade someday. So that's why she phrased it as, oh, poor you. She did do this in a later episode. Maybe she's like one of those shy people who are super shy, but because of that, they come off as arrogant. Whatever it is, Willow is not happy with Amity, nor Abomination class. So she makes a deal with Luce that Luce will pretend to be her Abomination, and she'll get an A. In Abomination class, as expected, Professor Buttmunch is living up to his name. <laughs> Too many toenails in unexpected places. Fail. Pathetic. And ugh, oh, he makes the abomination carry him around. Are you so cheap you can't afford platforms? Are you afraid you might get blisters? You have abomination goo right there. Make yourself a pair. If the next abomination is a failure, everyone gets extra homework for a month. And the next one to come up is... Excuse me, sir, but I am ready to present my abomination. Good detail, guys. That's why I feel like Amity was just being super patronizing to Willow. Still, Professor Buttmunch hasn't reached his daily quota of punishing insecure teenagers and picks Willow. How about... Willow? Which? Willow wows everybody, except Amity, who develops a newfound hatred for Luce the Human. I know you're in there! You can't hide from me! What are you? Who are you? I want answers! Oh, they will never like each other now. There is no hope. They'll never be anything like Starco. Now, I know I might get a lot of flag for this, but I can kind of get Amity acting the way she did here. True, she ends up becoming a little over the top, and she does make a complete butt of herself, but Willow is technically cheating. And this isn't college where cheating is about as normalized as braving. If there's one thing you can give Amity, she actually put the work in. It's super frustrating when you do all that, and then somebody doesn't do anything and they get higher marks. So Amity takes her fears to Principal Bump, who decides to cut loose up like a birthday cake. I have her list of ingredients right here. No. We were hoping for a closer look. And once again, might get a little head y but I think this was a bluff. Unlike the rest of Hexide, Bump actually has a working brain cell. I'm sure after Amity told on Willow, he took her aside and said something along the lines of, look, Miss White, I know the game Miss Park is playing. Don't worry, I'm not gonna kill her. I'm just gonna scare her. Some people say it's early installment weirdness, like with the Collector or Alador. Since Bump would never act this way in a later episode, I disagree. He was willing to switch Willow Willow to her preferred track, so hey. As expected, Willow can't bring herself to fish fillet loose, and the two escape. Not so fast! I'm not letting you get away so easily. I want my badge! Do you want your red scrunchie back too? I think Willow might have stolen that. Luce manages to get away thanks to Willow, but Amity's fate is hung in the air. What about Amity? When last we saw, she was asking Bump if today could count as extra credit. Hey, SpongeBob got extra credit. Why not Amity? Wow, things aren't looking so good for Lumity at the moment. And convention only makes it worse, kind of. Because of Gus and Willow, Luce has decided to go to the titular event, where Amity just happens to be for plot reasons. Ow, ooh, watch where you're... Oh, it's you. Willow's abomination thing. We also learn a lot about Amity in this episode. Like the fact her dream is to join the Emperor's Coven. And she isn't a stone-hearted wench. She can get excited at some stuff. Only the best can ascend these ranks. Someday that could be one of you. <laughs> to help her dreams come true, she's been training under Lilypad and is her strongest student. Really mad this wasn't followed up, but I'm saving that for an eventual Lilypad sequel video. Like usual, Amity is Little Miss B Word. Uh, put that away. You're the one that got me in trouble with Principal Bump, and I never get in trouble. Well, wasn't that because of Professor Buttmunch, not because of Bump? Did Bump get you in trouble because you tried to attack Willow afterwards? <gasps> Oops, that was an accident. FYI, King never got an apology for that, ever. Even after Amity became a good guy, I want blood and will use it for frosting. Luz doesn't like bullies, and with newfound confidence, she challenges Amity to a witch's duel, like her role model Azura. I accept. 
Right idea, Luce. So smart. And they up the ante by betting. If Luce wins, Amity has to apologize to King and admit humans can be witches too. If Amity wins, Luce can never practice magic again. The everlasting oath is sealed. That's probably fine. But Amity, if you win, we won't have a show. Once again, you're so smart, Luce. Summer camp is starting to look good right about now. Not helping is Lilypad and Ida have reconnected for the first time in years, and there is no sisterly love between them. You know what's the best part about being a caregiver or a parent? Not bonding with your offspring or being rewarded with raising the next generation. It's that you get to pass your hatred onto your babies. For one day, you won't have to hide from the law because I want to see how good a teacher you really are. They will have the duel, but in public, and both sides heavily cheat. Ida, because Luce has a better chance of driving a busload of kids across the George Washington Bridge blindfolded, and Lilypad because Ida's gonna cheat. I only did that because I knew you would cheat! I still cheated! Welcome down to my level! Let's be honest, is it really cheating if everybody else is doing it? The golden rule of cheating is you don't get caught, and they both broke it. But Lilypad does it right. So much so that Amity doesn't realize she was even doing it. Hey, what are you- <laughs> A power glyph from the construction coven. So the deal is broken, and Amity is mortified that Lilypad embarrassed her in public, which kind of like King's Cake is never brought up again. Okay, I will make the lily pad video eventually. Amity runs off until Luz finds her crying. I'm sorry. <laughs> Seriously, just leave me alone. Unbefitting of a blight child, I must say. Even if in any other circumstance, it's my personal philosophy that it's a right to cry because crying takes the sad out of you. It's all you ever do, first at school and now this. I mean, you've only known Luce for like 10 minutes tops and this isn't even Luce's fault. She didn't put that glyph on your neck. Besides, Lilypad is the coven head, so how would this affect your chances? Off topic, but outside of the tiny cat coven called back, this episode was loaded to the brim with early installment weirdness. Later episodes all but say that while the Emperor's Coven is the paragon of covens, you don't need high grades or whatnot to get in. You need to go to tryouts and duel with people if there aren't that many spots. Plus considering Hunter and Ida, pretty much anybody can join, not just honor students. Anyhow, back to our regularly scheduled programming. You lost! You cheated! Say it! Say you're not a witch! I'm not a witch. But I'm training hard to be one. Amity, while not impressed by the light spell, sorry Luce, it's like the magic equivalent of writing your name, is impressed by the method of spell casting. So much so that she breaks the oath, which I'm pretty sure was already broken by the both of you cheating. Did it work? Can I still learn magic? Humans have no magical ability, but I doubt that'll stop you. Ooh, the problems are becoming clearer, but not enough to rival Starco. At the moment, they're more like nitpicks. Finally, we get to Lost in Language, which seals the deal in terms of friends. It's gonna be a while until we get to the girlfriend stage. Luz goes to the Bonesboro Library to return some of Ida's old books, only to discover that Amity has a hidden soft side. Bye! Good luck, Miss Amity. Thank you. Thank you, Braxis. See you next time. <laughs> Would she qualify as a sundere? Much like convention, we get another reminder that Amity, for all her faults, is still a teenager trying to make it through life. Turns out she's a bookworm who loves working in the library. Totally jelly. She even built her own secret clubhouse behind the romance stacks, which once again, super jelly. Surprised she picked the romance section though. Wouldn't that be like swarming with people? Luce also discovers that Amity loves the good witch Azura. More on that later. And even if Amity claims it's for extra credit, she does love reading to little kids, especially the story of Audubon, the bookmaker. Said the tin boy with a yelp. Odebin smiled and paced the floor. I've never had real friends before. This episode is important for another reason, as it gives us added Blight family lore. I'm Emera, and this is Edric. We're Amity's older siblings. Edric and Emera, due to being Amity's older siblings, have a privilege Luce and Willow crave, getting to tease her in public. Hey, Mittens! <laughs> Mom says stop forgetting your lunch, and stop being a jerk to your friend. 
<clears throat> Pretty sure this is a prank. No way in heck would Odalia make sure her babies have eaten lunch. Oh, you forgot your lunch? Dumb toenails, better remember next time. Luz befriends the Blight Twins, and they pull what Luz assumes are a series of annoying but otherwise harmless pranks. Fiction? Fiction? Is our world but fiction? Then what in my life is real anymore? <laughs> the crowning achievement will be later that night. The rare Wailing Star meteor shower is about to occur, which brings books to life. Oh my titan, hide the rule 34 fanfics. Edric and Emera want to use the magic to bring Amity's diary to life. She needs to learn not to mess with people like that. So we're going to find her diary. And then post the pages all around school for everyone to see. <laughs> I bet Regina would approve. If you're wondering, yes, I wrote the bulk of this script on October 3rd. Amity catches them. As expected, she isn't happy. I've been trying to figure out what your deal is. Are you a poser? A nerd? I know. You're a bully, Luce. I mean, I guess it makes a little more sense than convention. Luce did try to force her way into being Amity's friend, and she was told no repeatedly. No means no, Luce. She never seemed to realize that Amity wanted space. Do you see me going to the Owl Shack and bugging you while you fry up owls? But every time you come near me, I get in trouble. Just leave me alone! Okay, you know how, like, when you want people to leave, but they won't leave, it's really frustrating? This is what that looks like! Edric and Emera accidentally summoned Odebin. On the opposite, Odebin is as cute as a button, but thanks to their antics, they turn him into this. Odebin? Ugh! As a result of having a face not even a mother could love, he wants a friend, but he has zero boundaries, and tries to sew them into a book. He sounds like the Phantom, but he lacks the pipes of a Tony Award-winning angel! Three! Ah! <laughs> well, maybe they would be your friends if you didn't spend all your time making books. It's 2022, nobody reads books anymore. Friends! <laughs> Don't hurt them, I was just trying to give constructive criticism. It's not my fault you're too young to go on Tinder. Thankfully, they managed to escape through quick thinking. <laughs> Page from Mr. Odebin. I'm so sorry. I don't know what came over me. Hey, it's okay. We're still friends. To make things up to her, Luz gives Amity a copy of The Goodwood Jazura, Book 5. Thank you. Maybe you aren't a bully. I haven't exactly been the friendliest witch either. I'll think on that. Yay, now they're friends, sort of. More interesting than the beginning of Starco, True Marco started the show as the designated safe kid, but I guess since this was pilot rules, he overcame this pretty quickly. Strangely, I don't care. I really don't think I could take an entire season of Marco being a funny daddy. It was all for the best. Because Luz and Amity have a tendency to bond over their shared experiences, Amity begins to develop a certain level of trust in Luz, and it all comes to a head in the episode, and Chanting Grom fight. It's kind of like this show's version of Reunited or Jailbreak. Hexide is gearing up for its annual Grom, kind of like prom, but if Touchstone provided the decorations. As Amity explains, it's Grom, short for Grometheus the Fearbringer. It's a monster that lives under the school. Every year it tries to break out and a student has to defeat it before it invades the town. Ever the Optimist, Bump holds a party and calls it tradition. Is valedictorian, and likely because her mom wouldn't stop leaving voicemails, Amity is chosen, much to her dismay. And all the while, she's frustrated by a note. Here, your note. Man, you got some quick grabbers. It's just, it's private. Amity doesn't want to be Grom Queen, since Grom personifies your worst fears for the entire school to see. Worst thing is that Grom can read minds and shapeshift into your worst fear. And mine is. Very embarrassing. Is it wormy from Spongebob? It's not my fault that close-up makes my phone feel unclean. Unfortunately, Bump isn't letting Amity out of this one. Well, I did propose Odalia is a reason, I've heard the theory that Grom is a living test of character. Maybe Bump picked Amity for personal reasons, like he knew what was going on at home and thought he was helping. Instead, Luz throws her hat into the ring and decides she'll be Amity's substitute. I'll do it. I'll take your place and face Grom in the arena. I'll be your fearless champion. Well, Noble, Luz 
I think you beat out Aaron Yeager in the amount of times you charge headfirst into terrifying situations to defend your loved ones. Consequences be damned. You're lucky you're the main character, is my point. A brief training session with the Flight Twins doesn't seem to work, so Ida and King come to Grom to act as chaperones. Before the show goes on, Amity offers Luce some words of encouragement. And thank you, Luce. Honestly, I'm kind of amazed with how fearless you are. You've done things I could never do. But Gus has to interrupt what would have been a great moment. Now introducing our Grom Queen. You know her. You love her. You've at least heard of her. Sadly, that's true. <laughs> Which makes it funny. Grom shows up and takes the form of... Luz? What is this terrible place? Esperate un momento. This isn't camp. Some personification of fear. Mija, have you been lying to me? <laughs> Yeah, that's better. Luz tries to stop Grom, but surprisingly, it rampages and nothing is working. Instead, Amity makes the ultimate sacrifice. Turns out, Amity's biggest fear is the rejection. I can't roll my R's. Wonder who it is. Oh, it's it's not important. <laughs> This leads into Wing It Like Witches, where Amity doesn't even try to hide the fact she has a crush on Luce that burns as hot as the sun. Oh, Luce, you're here! I mean, obviously you're here, this is school, and you go here now, with, uh, me. <laughs> I've been talking for too long. Okay, I'll be honest, this is the only part of Lumity I think is rushed. Amity had no problem hiding her crush in Enchanting Grom Fight, but here, she's like super flustered. Me? On a team with you? <laughs> Running around in cute uniforms, <laughs> sweating. I gotta go. It's definitely funny, but it felt like we were missing something. Luz never discovered the truth about the crush, and she never asked any follow-up questions. Huh. Well, I guess she's out. Amity, your secret is safe. Still, Lumity is on the back burner because Basha broke Amity's leg. Ugh, now you won't get to confront Lilypad and Luz will have a harder time helping Ida. Life is a series of unfair compromises. Guess that takes us to the end of season one. So far, so good, right? <laughs> But let's get back to the basics. The problem with Starcoat was it would end up swallowing the plot. The show itself had zero focus, especially in season four. Once again, I have a whole series I got to check out. For Dana Terrace, Lumity usually tried to avert this by following the main plot. Most of the time, it was relegated to B plot, or it wasn't the focus focus of the episode. And usually it worked. However, likely because one, they did not have as much time as they wanted because of Disney, and two, Amity is arguably the most interesting character potential-wise out of the Scooby gang, at least prior to Hunter. Amity, and by extension Lumity, had a tendency to hijack the plot or hog the spotlight. Episodes that weren't about her usually ended up becoming about her, like understanding Willow. Willow, you were never too weak to be my friend. I was too weak to be yours or even escaping expulsion, which introduces us to her parents, Jeff and Haley Blight. Said it before, and I'll say it again, but Gus and Willow really shouldn't have been in this episode, as hypocritical as that might sound. I will agree with some of you guys that technically they did sort of contribute to those messes, and I think Amity would see it as more of a punishment if all of her friends got the axe, not just the one, but the two contributed squat to this episode. Luz is the one who goes to Blight Manor, Luz is the one Odalia uses as a crash test dummy. She's the one Amity has to save. Amity did not need Gus and Willow to help. They just end up fighting. And like two seconds later, they get kidnapped. Amity, wait! On the bright side, this episode is the start of something special. Luz realizing she has feelings for Amity. the looking glass runes kind of continues this trend, but the relationship sees a major improvement, and it all comes with a hefty dose of public embarrassment. Luz wants help trying to find the diary of Philip Woodabane, but the truth is hidden in the forbidden stacks. Why? Well, because Philip was a village creep who used people as sacrifices. Are you dead in here on me? They try to get in, but Amity's boss catches them and grants her the highest of punishments. Gosh, it's so hard hard for me to say this, but, like, you're fired? <laughs> 
You're lucky you weren't fired out of a cannon into the sun. Amity runs home, unsure of what to do. But because her roots look like, oh, that, they look like tree roots, not hair roots, her siblings suggest a makeover. Also, this scene helps to answer another important question. Why does Amity love Luz? Some people say that Luz going from friend to crush is a little rushed. I mean, I think going from enemy to frenemy is the most rushed part of that relationship, but everybody is entitled to their opinion. These last few episodes have made the point that Amity was forced to behave a certain way and wasn't allowed to form personal attachments with kids her own age. Skara and Basha might like her as a friend, but the feeling isn't mutual. Luz, even if she was pushy about it, tried her hardest to be friends with Amity in spite of everything. She accepted her. She liked Amity for her. I'm sure giving her the Azura book sealed the deal. Thankfully, off screen, Moose got Amity her job back and found a little pest along the way. Ah, you're the one that ate the diary! Ah! <sighs> I hate you. It's a mouse now! It must not be allowed to continue drawing breath. Get the peanut butter. This is an echo mouse. It consumes knowledge through writing and can play back anything it eats. We dealt with them a lot at work. Oh, maybe that's slightly better. But the library needs to find another pest management company because clearly the current one is just sitting on their hands. Amity, with newfound confidence, takes the first step forward. Don't worry. You always have a way of sneaking into people's hearts. The ruby and sapphire method of PDA? Uh, okay, good to see you. Farewell forever. Why did I do that? 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 No! Now we'll never see Amity again! And just when her arc was starting to get good, it's a great thing we have Hootie. Luz wants to try and take the big leap, but insecurity keeps getting to her. Amity's smart, cool, and classy. Asking her out should be breathtaking, emotional, and real! Everyone back home said I was cheesy. Completely understandable, Luz. Anxiety can go eat a peach. Hootie tries to give her that gentle push by kidnapping Amity and forcing them into the therapy box. <gasps> Amity! <gasps> Luz? Where are we? I think Hootie brought me here? Nope. Ah, uh, nope. Nope, 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 nope. In the basement, Hootie has set up a tunnel of love. And it's... Uh, how do I put it? <gasps> I wouldn't bring Scott Malkinson down there because he would die just by seeing it. And Hootie is 100% a voyeur. He hopes this will get the girls to confess their feelings. How'd I know all that? I suppose I'm just attuned to other people's emotions. Yeah, okay, whatever you want to tell yourself. Amity likes it. Luz isn't so convinced. Uh... No! That was, uh... An invasive species. They're the one thing humans take for granted outside of life and helium. Hootie thinks the plan didn't work, and he does this. Hootie, calm down, you ding dong! Okay, that's my favorite King line. However, they're able to reassure Hootie that he helped them, and Ida and King leave loose to make her own decisions. Amity? Ah! Do it loose. Everything is so crazy right now, and I have no idea what my future holds, but it would be so cool if you were in it. So, uh... What? Okay. Amity Blight, do you want to go out with me? Yes! <laughs> okay! Yay! Official upgrade! Which means... Back to Starco! Another problem with Starco is they drew it out. And then when they eventually got together, it was so rushed. Star and Tom were broken up for less than a day at that point. Starco should have happened in season two or three. Just enough time to develop and just enough time to keep our attention. Or heck, even the end of season one. Like after Star rescues Marco, they could kiss to seal the deal. Plus Star wouldn't seem like a flighty weirdo when she won't destroy magic, not because of the political fallout, but because she'll be be separated from Marco, boohoo. Marco will be fine. The magic will put him back where he belongs. But that's not fair. Overcooked versus following the instructions, which is better. But it's not the end of Lumity. Time to get to relationship after birth. Eclipse Lake sees Amity learn that growing up in a household where you're constantly treated like a show dog does wonders for your personal relationships going forward. Luce is sick with the common mold, so she gets benched along with Willow and Gus. Willow, Goops, watch over Luce. She thinks she has snakes for arms. <sighs> 
Luz has been trying to invent her own secret love language, but Amity doesn't understand humans tend to do that through calculators. Nor does she realize what a calculator even is. Maybe that's for the better. It's a good thing you aren't in human high school. Hunter, who has also gone through a ton of abuse, gets under Amity's skin like a tick and makes her think that if she bombs this mission, Luz will throw her away like one of those TVs with the big backs. Seems clear to me. Come back with results or else you can figure out the rest. At least until King sets her straight. You are rad. Of course. This is loose we're talking about. The mission isn't a total success. It's more bittersweet, more bitter than sweet. But on the bright side, Luz gets better and she doesn't die. And she's just happy that Amity made it back okay. Amity! I'm so glad my awesome girlfriend is okay. Despite the problems with Lumity, when season 2B rolls around, I will argue that they found a pretty good balance. Amity actually has stuff to do when Luce isn't around. The Coven Day Parade sees Amity try and learn Spanish for Luce. Hola, Batata. Did you just call me a sweet potato? Yes, is that not a term of endearment? Sucks they don't have the Mike Judge cartoons in Bonesboro. No joke, I actually did learn a little bit of Spanish from watching his shows. Because of yesterday's lie, Luz thinks Camilla wants to hold her captive back in Gravesfield. Promise me, when you come home, you'll stay with me and you'll never go back to that place. I still think the problem was Luz never got to explain herself fully. I'm sure if she said, I'm not in danger and there's people taking care of me and I'm going to school and eating, Camilla still would have been a little uneasy, but more cool with it. Anyhow, Luz tries to go the star butterfly route and keep her promise a secret. But by doing so, Amity worries even more. Luz says she hasn't been to the human realm, but I just get the feeling that she's lying. I'm not gonna invade her privacy like that. Later, Amity does what Tom never did and confronts her. And I'm like, star, Luz comes clean. I know this situation is crazy and I'm okay taking things one day at a time. But I can't help if I don't know what's going on. Aw, I'm sure this won't matter down the line. Any sport in a storm has Luz and Amity try to track down the true offer of the Goodwitch Azura series, believing it's a big grand conspiracy, only to learn. Human garbage is constantly leaking into our water. And about a year ago, I found this box of books washed up on the shore. I've been trying to make a sale of it ever since, but no one's buying! Which honestly makes zero sense. I know the writers were trying to make it as anticlimactic as possible, but Tibbles being the one behind it is the worst possible thing they could have chosen. If Tibbles found the books were from the human world, why not market the books as being from the human world? When Ida had her stand, she said all of her relics were from Earth for a reason. I think most people would buy the books just on the mirror alone, or be like, I wonder what humans think of witches. <laughs> I don't ride a broomstick. Silly humans. Because if he acts like the books are from the demon realm, no wonder people don't read it. It's the equivalent of writing a story about Italians where the main character is a mobster that talks with his hands and eats gabagool and macaroni. Okay, I'm Italian. I grew up Italian. And while I talk with my hands, regularly get agita, and love pizza, I've never heard of gabagool. Is that even a thing? Or is it like a unicorn? I think it should have just been that Luce and Amity find the book on the beach and they realize, oh wait, this is from Earth. There's no copyright system on the boiling aisles. Oh, were you expecting some dramatic discovery? <laughs> no one likes you, Tibbles, and not only because we're not meant to like you, but otherwise, great subplot, since it's my answer whenever people tell me that I shouldn't come up with headcanons or look too deeply into certain shows. True, I don't think some shows are super deep, but Amity puts it pretty well. Well, I had fun coming up with those theories. They were like our own stories. I think that's a sign that the show is good since it survives independently on its own. It gets people talking about it and it's a lot of fun to come up with your own little stories, even if that's probably not what the writers intended. All of this leads up to clouds on the horizon where Amity gets grounded by Odalia for hiding behind trash until her saviors come. Three, two, one. Oh. <gasps> Yay! Even if it did come at the cost of the rest of the episode having poor animation. Sorry, man! But if I can do this to help, 
Why would I refuse? That's right. The Emperor has eyes everywhere. But plot-related stuff happens, and now they're trapped in Gravesfield. Oh no. So, where do we go from here? I don't know, okay? But I doubt Luce and Amity will break up. I remember when Season 2B was about to come out, and people were fearing that Luce would cut off Amity in order to protect her. I never bought into that. It's too cliche. I don't know how they could do such a thing and still have time for everything else. Besides, Lumini is revolutionary. Why would they destroy it just for a cheap plot point? At least when Ruby and Sapphire did it, it called out a major flaw in their relationship, which honestly, it was a complaint I had for years. I think the only way Lumini would end would be if there was some kind of amphibia-style ending where Luz gets cut off from the Boiling Isles forever, which I also don't see happening. I feel Luz will either stay in the Boiling Isles permanently, but go back to Graves every so often, or she'll stay with Camilla but go to the demon realm during the summer or on weekends or stuff like that. And that was Lumity, what Starco should have been but never was. It's organic, it's natural, and it's fun. True, the two pairings occasionally share the same problems, but Lumity still ranks superior. Thanks Christopher for the request. Next week will be... okay, I don't know, probably Rick and Morty, it's been a while.